Hi, I'm Perry from Rennet and Rind, coming at you with another Rennet and Rind Mystery Cheese Boxes, five British Artisan cheeses from our beautiful Isles, delivered to your door for you to try, matured in our maturing rooms to perfection, and um, in your Mystery Cheese Box you would have got I ate more British cheese, which is so important for the industry right now as I keep on going on in COVID scenario. Your care notes on how to look after them, and of course the important bit which is your cheese notes, so you know what you're eating all your way through. You can discard these, eat them, enjoy them, but this just adds a little bit more fun to the experience. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the first cheese, which is Tunworth, which is a British camembert made in Hampshire by Stacey Hedges. Um, and Roman Blanc said this is the best camembert in the world. So if a Frenchman has said that, then it's very important that we listen to him and we respect him on his opinion because he thinks a British camembert is better than any French one, which is massively important to me and to Britain. So, um, yeah, so beautiful rind. We've got this kind of breakdown, this wrinkle that's coming in, which you expect on most well-aged camemberts. This one's just slightly kind of you know, a little bit beyond the kind of area where you would maybe pick up this cheese in supermarkets and things like that. It's more broken down. What I've done, I've done it two ways because there's this whole argument, you know, should you bake it or shouldn't you bake it? Rustic, President, shame on you. You have taught us from growing up that we always should bake camembert and we don't have to. It's great both ways. As you can see on the unbaked one, you know, you've got a clean breakdown. You've got that ooziness that's coming through already. And that kind of room temperature will give you a different kind of experience than rather baking it. So let's try it un, um, unbaked or not baked. You know, that, that's just beautiful. I mean, the texture is just phenomenal, actually. I mean, that's perfect all the way through. Stacy, well done, like absolute master cheese maker. Smell, typical camembert notes. You're getting that kind of salty, cabbagey, you know, sort of uh, grilled, um, salted veg and things like that that you're getting off it. Little bit of dairy in there. Touch of ammonia, you know, just a light, light bit, but you know, it's not a bad thing. It's going to make this cheese more powerful. The texture is stunning. I mean, you can't. Sorry, you you can't get much better than that. The saltiness is coming through. The impacts there. The cabbagey, the that that kind of stewed Brussels is there. The dairies in the background. Little bit of butter. Nice finish. All that saltiness coming through. That arguably is probably one of the best Tumworth I've ever tried. It's actually really, really good. So let's try it baked. Maybe we can get like a little kind of dipping scenario with this. So 180 degrees, pop it in the oven until it's ready. Mine really started bursting out the sides because obviously I've cut my cheese in half. It should stay together really. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at that for Instagram. Oh no, that's pretty bad. Let me try that again. Look. Uh, yeah, 180 degrees, 5-10 minutes, keep an eye on it. Now, do not put any garlic, rosemary, white wine on top. That will, that's just a trick to hide terrible camemberts that you get in the supermarket. Bake this as it was intended, naked, maybe cut a few bits in top if you want to, like cut a few slices to make it better. Let me just give this a go, I can't resist any, any longer. really good now it's interesting maybe you all should try and cut in half and do two different profiles because it becomes a little bit more delicate in its baked form the saltiness gets pushed a little bit it could be the biscuit they are salted but it's just more lighter which is really fascinating so if you cut a bit of this off and you're like, well, maybe it's a little bit too strong for me, bake it, it should dial it down a notch, actually. I do need to move on to other cheeses. <laughs> That's delicious. Literally, it knocks all the supermarket camemberts out of the window. Well done, Hampshire. Uh, Stacy, because that is absolutely phenomenal. Next cheese we have is Made in Cornwall by one of our favourite 
cheese uh, makers, Liner Dairies, which is just checking my mustache. <laughs> I got loads of camembert in it. Um, Stidians, which is made by Catherine Mead, Liner Dairies, ma known for making like Cornish Yard, which comes on the board every now and again, everyone loves. And then they did this amazing cheese called Kern, which has a black rind, which is like an Alpine style cheese, nutty sweet which everyone's like, oh my God, that's my favorite. I wonder if this will be. So it's a, essentially like a naked yarg. So normally they're obviously wrapped in nettles. These ones were just left to just sort of mature. And what it's created is just like this kind of um, really interesting uh, cheddar style, really. So familiar, fresh, zing, citrus, acidity, cheddar notes. That's what I'm getting. Closer to the rind, you're getting that smell of the, of the maturing rooms, that damp you know, musty kind of edge, which isn't a bad thing. It, you know, you're learning where it, it, it lived for all its life. Not as powerful as usual cheddar. Good tones there. Good like acidity running all the way through it, but more delicate and lighter. Texture's lovely. You know, it's kind of moist on that edge of moist and dry so you're flooring a little bit for more it coats the palate really well delicious cheese gonna be difficult to pick a favorite this week next cheese that we have just double check my notes yes it's baronet which is made in uh wiltshire by juliana at the old cheese rooms now juliana has been doing some incredible stuff recently this cheese when you open your box is the one that punches you in the face it's the one that's really pongy it's a wash rind cheese so this is washed in a brine solution which is just water and salt every few days just to get this kind of pinky rind which like allows the more molds to grow on there yeasty kind of brevy combination of a thousand different molds that will speed up the breakdown in the middle now if you're not a fan of pongy cheeses just take off the rind and eat the middle the rind is like where it holds all that smelliness inside not as powerful as you would expect usually so um i'm a rind guy um so i'm gonna have some rind so yeah i'm obviously gonna get yeah i mean socks it's pongy you know it's pongy it's a revolution style famous cheese made in france uh obviously made in the uk so you're getting that like really um yeah, it's just powerful, you know. Texture is stunning. It's interesting to compare the two sort of, you know, semi-soft, soft cheeses that we have. If you try them back and forth, this one's slightly more chewier. It's got more bite to it. And the rind holds that together quite nicely. The flavour is really buttery. Underneath the rind, there's like this... Um, you know if you can just kind of cut off a bit to the edge of the rind there's this really unique flavor which is like um like peanuts really unusual but a delicious cheese and um you know this has been really coming up our ranks online i mean whenever we send this out i'm always like oh you know it's a kind of maybe a marmite cheese because of smell but actually more people have complimented this cheese than most cheese I have online. So it's really hitting some notes for a lot of people, you know? So next cheese we have, so we've gone, you know, I'm overpowered at the moment. I've had savory, cabbagey, you know, a lot kind of going on, really kind of powerful flavors. And what we want to move into next is Duckett's Kefili, which I featured on the board before, but it's a really great cheese because it's a Kefili crumbly style. As you can see that there's a kind of a little bit of breakdown that's going on if you break it between your fingers. But, you know, as all territorials, most territorials are, are known for, is their real fresh lemoniness. That's kind of the hitting note that you go on. And over this course of actually doing mystery cheese boxes, I'll be honest, I, I never really gravitated towards territorial style cheeses. Purely because they felt a little bit light for me. They didn't feel too overly strong, and I felt like I was getting more depth from most of the other cheeses. But I've really grown to love them through this process because they provide a really welcome bait break to the cheese board, lift it up, you know. And uh, this is made by Westcombe Dairy down in uh, Somerset, make an awesome cheddar called Westcombe Cheddar. 
really milky, yo yogurty smell, you know, which is um, really nice. Really like welcome relief, you know, these really rich and nutritious cheeses and coming into something like Yeah, that's a a beautiful welcome break from all these. An amazing palate cleanser. This one you should gravitate to if you feel a little bit overwhelmed. You know, reach for your glass of water, but equally reach for your kafili. Because that it's moist, high mo moisture cheese. It coats the palate beautifully and eradicates that acidity, eradicates any of the previous flavours that you've had. Um, really light, like hasn't got the depth to it, but that's not a problem. You know that's pretty cool. You know that that, that does its job on this cheese board. Mm. Delicious as well. <laughs> um, you you're lucky this week. These are like bang on. I, I'm really looking forward to sharing this with my girlfriend afterwards. Last cheese, I feature it on here a fair bit because it always just comes true for me. And I felt like all these traditional flavours that we have, the cheddar, the brie camembert, you know, the, 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 the territorial, deserve equally a, um, you know, traditional cheese. So we've gone with Crockwell Bishop Stilton. As I always say, pay second fiddle quite a bit to, uh, to Colston Bassett. But I love them. Um, you know, I love them for this kind of the colour, I always say it people took the mick out of me for saying ebony ivory this blackish blue that's running through the vein of, of the blue uh, of the cheese is just a really beautiful color normally it's quite light but this is quite dark and rusty um oh, let me just move that let's uh, snap a bit off yeah saltiness like mineral salt i'm getting like sea salt that you get there you know brothy kind of really light notes that are there texture beautiful it's like um the only thing i can liken that texture to is like we have like uh, our butter out you know um in, in margarine kind of tray uh, butter tray for our toast and stuff like that and every now and again you know you cut off a bit for your bread and you kind of know you shouldn't you lick the knife and although it's bad for you it's incredibly delicious and the texture is just so pleasing and the mouthfeel on this is just phenomenal like really think about that we've got all variety of textures here you know soft soft firm you know firm soft hard you know uh, crumbly phenomenal flavor that salt note that I was smelling that seawater kind of is coming through that minerality of it and this deep, impactful, chicken brothy umaminess that's just sitting there and runs all the way through it to the end where you get a little bit of like spiciness, a little bit of heat, um, kind of like acidity, like a salt burn, not in an unpleasant way. And that's a beautiful cheese. I am not going to pick a favourite this week because they're all really good. Um, they're all... Yeah, I, I, I should always probably pick a favourite and I'd have to go with Tunworth this week such a versatile, versatile cheese and you know loads of these are share, loads of these cheeses boards and boxes you're sharing with your family and friends and you can just stick that in the oven or break that open get some beautiful bread dip in and just massively enjoy it over a bottle of wine so I am going to pick one even though it's very very close which is the Tunworth so those are your five British artisan cheeses for this week Thank you so much yet again for supporting our industry. I hope you enjoy these. I'm expecting some really nice um, messages because I think this cheese board is just superb. So um, let me know your thoughts. Anything you need, always drop me a line. Hello at renitandryan.co.uk um, and hopefully I'll speak to you again soon.